What is up, everybody? We are back after another one-day hiatus. Uh, I apologize for the the missed day of videos, but we are back. Uh, we're not going to miss another day this week. Um, we're going to be moving up the times of all the shows. Uh, I'm really excited, but we missed probably uh, one of the most exciting days of the week so far. Um, or not of the week, but of like the month so far. Um, crazy stuff happening yesterday. Um, it looks like we got a, uh, a logo for the morning mint. Finally, thank you to Dylan Orell, uh, my brother for hooking me up with that logo. Um, there are some other little, uh, kind of quality things that we're working on right now. Uh, some animations going to add timestamps. Um, so a few updates still working on there. Um, so much happening though. Uh, we'll get into it. Uh, I asked this morning, uh, you know, if anybody had anything that they wanted to discuss, uh, on today's show, um, obviously, uh, you know, how, uh, how yesterday went was one of them. Um, but we'll just jump into it. One from, uh, Wuda right here, uh, thoughts on how the market would react if ETH pumped our NFTs priced only in ETH and detached from ETH's fiat value. Um, so I think it's a great question. Something you should understand, uh, kind of going forward here, um, is that most people price their NFTs in ETH. Uh, we kind of see this with like past pullbacks um, and pumps where where NFTs were kind of like their own like ecosystem, like the native currency is ETH. Um, and I think when ETH came down, we saw ETH get cheaper. So more people were able to get into ETH um, and then take that ETH and purchase uh, NFTs. So I think if ETH drops, you see NFTs pump. Um, I don't though think if you see ETH pump, you see uh, NFTs die because actually a lot of people that have ETH in you know DeFi or their leverage or their trading up um, are taking that ETH and then putting it back into NFTs. Uh, that you know usually seems to be the case, or at least how many people think. Um, so I think I think ETH and NFTs are somewhat correlated, where the money flows into NFTs no matter what. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to understand that, uh, you know, really, if you have something that you bought for five ETH and ETH goes up or goes down, you're still going to want to sell that for six ETH. It's just the way people think. Um, good question, though. Like, I, I think it's definitely one that people need to understand. Um, reaction to yesterday's drops. Uh, again, like everybody, who, everybody that I've talked to has been, what are your thoughts on yesterday's drops? Um, you know, what is the best way to launch a hype project? What is, you know, should there be limits to transactions? How, how, what is the best way to do a drop essentially? Um, and I think a lot of projects, creators are messing this up. Like we've seen it happen before where like, uh, somebody will say, you know, say the drop like a minute early and then, you know, people that weren't ready for it get, get in early and they're able to mint. Um, and they avoid the fast gas and the high gas. Um, should there be pre mints? I think what MetaHeroes is doing with their um, with the the passes that they're going to be selling to the comic book holders is going to be an interesting case study on this. Um, and I think that there needs to be not only a better kind of plan from projects that are doing this, um, but there needs to be a you know, and this needs to be thought out. Like if you hype something up and say, Hey, it's going to be drop it, you know, 5 AM or 4 AM or like whatever. Um, you know, everybody's going to be there in a mint and it's not like a Supreme or Kith drop where, Oh shoot, I missed it. It's a horrible experience for everybody. It's not like, Oh, I got one. You still get screwed if you got one because you're paying, you know, potentially two, three X what the actual asset was worth in gas. Um, and we've seen this with Artblocks. Artblocks, the drop opens at 12, and now gas is 1,500 guay. And you're paying 0.55 ETH for something that was worth 0.1 ETH originally. So it only rewards the, the miners. I don't think that anybody has gotten drops down to a perfect way yet, um, besides like just soft launching. I don't think you should hype up projects right now. I think it's good to like hype up the project and say, like, hey, we have this great thing. Pay attention to it. But I don't think you should, you know, hey, we're going to drop it at this time. I think you should just soft launch and let, like, the people that uh, are closest to your community get in. So just a thought there. Um, 
another funny one from Yat Museum uh, that I think is it's funny, but it's also pretty a serious point right now where you need to have the ability right now to think very rationally, think for yourself, do your own research. A lot of people are posting, you know, who, what are we minting today? Oh, everybody's going to mint this. Like, don't follow the herd, think independently, um, have a thesis. Like if you're about to pay 0.35 for stoner cats, why is it just because they had Vitalik in a video? Is it just because, uh, you know, uh, there are, you know, celebrities involved. I don't know if that, like, is that, is that a good investment thesis? Um, or do you just like it? Like, if you're just like, I hey, like it, I'm going to buy it. I don't care what anybody else is thinking. That's great. That works. Like that is, that is your personal opinion and you're following it. Um, but if you're looking on Twitter and seeing what are people doing, I'm going to just buy what everybody else is buying. Um, that herd mentality likely won't end well. So I encourage you, if you're about to buy something right now, if you're, um, unsure of how you're going to, you know, purchase and collect over the next couple of months, take the chance to just know and build that mental kind of, you know, thinking and pattern of what do I want to do? What do I think is correct? Um, instead of just going into what people are buying. Um, so just three questions to start off the show. Uh, I know we're spending a lot of time uh, not talking about what's happening in the market, but I uh, just want to give some thoughts on those questions and maybe uh, add a little different dynamic to the show. Um, with that said, let's hop into yesterday's uh, train wrecks. Um, the first one obviously being Stoner Cats, who uh, upon having hyped up their drop so much, um, they had to push it back until today at 2 p.m. Uh, they cited issues of IPSF um, and... Uh, their servers and it was it was a, it was really bad um, it just shows like if you hype a project up and thousands of people come to do it and you're not ready and you have to understand that there's so much happening we saw this with Gary V like and it wasn't his fault like they they set a date and they said we're gonna release it this time and you run into issues like I we're working with like very not cutting edge technology, like just setting up a smart contract and minting, but it's new. Like there's going to be bumps. You're going to run into things you weren't aware of. It's a learning process for most people. Um, so setting a date right now, unless you're like, Hey, we know this is going to work perfectly. We're all good to go is probably a bad way to do it. Um, so with Stoner cats, they had to push the drop back people upset more FUD thrown around the project. Um, they released this statement saying that uh, between IPFS issues and high site traffic, we need to push to tomorrow, 727 at 2 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We really appreciate everyone showing up and we want it to be right for you. We also dropped royalties down from 10% to 2.5%. Um, so I, with, with the criticism of it being late, more and more people piled on to criticizing like, Oh, they just paid Vitalik to come on. Um, 0.35 is too much. The royalty is 10%. Um, and it started feeling more and more to people like, hey, this is just a Kickstarter for people to kick off like an animated series and we're getting caught with the bag paying, you know, $700 for a cat. Um, you know, does this make sense? And I think Stoner Cats messing up that kind of had to come back. Um, and do kind of what like, Zed Run did when they, they botched their men. Like, they gave horses out to everybody. Um, in Stoner Cat's case, they dropped royalties from 10% to five to 2.5%, um, which I don't think was, like, the biggest issue. I think I think the pricing people is where people are held up. Um, but, yeah, like, I think also hyping the project up was not the, the way to do it. Um, Beanie had a tweet that I resonated with pretty, pretty much spot on and said, hey, that's I love it, which is the moral of the story is to stop announcing drop times. All it does is create senseless, senseless FOMO and spikes gas. It also makes you look dumb, like dumb noobs when your website candle can't, can't handle the traffic and your devs are incompetent. Better just to reward your own community with a stealth launch. I, I like this though. Like reward your fans. Don't reward the people who are coming in and FOMOing and going to flip. You want, you want your most loyal diamond handed community members buying your drops like if i'm gonna drop a project i'm not gonna go on twitter and be like hey i'm uh it's coming out at like 3 a.m or like i don't know i keep saying like three and four or five a.m 
um, it's coming out 5 p.m. and you know be there and I end up with only you know 25% of my community members that wanted it uh, getting it and the rest are in people that are just flipping um, I think you want to reward like any artist who's listening to this right now you're, you're making stuff or you're launching a project or um, you know, you're thinking about getting into this space. If you build a community, reward them. Those are the people that you want to reward. You don't want to reward, you know, Joe Schmo who's coming in and they're going to throw one ETH and their goal is to get two ETH by the end of the day. Like that's not what you want. Um, so just, just a thought process there. Um, other news, uh, from the last couple of days, um, Saul Jake's, uh, world editions misunderstood, 50 pieces priced at 0.5 ETH uh, all sell out in 10 minutes. Uh, so he did 25 ETH in under 10 minutes, which is wild. Um, happy for him. A lot of artists taking note of this, doing a collab uh, kind of rendition on a uh, Hearst piece with his own drawings. Um, it's a wild piece. I love it. Um, interested and excited for Jake. Giving him a shout out. I always give him a shout out because I just love his vibe and, uh, He's just one of those people that I, I've kind of met and known in the space since day one. So um, really cool to see that. Uh, the other drop that we had yesterday um, that was botched was uh, the the Vogu drop. Um, between the mint button not working and having to work on the contract, this was one of the other things I saw um, that one of the mods uh, or people that had permissions within that Discord um, was able to go directly to that contract when no one else could um, and actually started minting. Uh, so they were able to become uh, you know, a minter. They, they went through and they were able to accumulate, I think it was like, yes, there it says 68 uh, Vogus, um, which is a bad look. And kind of on top of that, if we look at the distribution, um, Yvette's.eth pointed this out and said that roughly 26 and a half, 26% of the supply of Vogu is already allocated to 150 wallets. Um, and like looking at other projects, this is, this is like, this is pretty big. Like there's, you know, you know, no FOMO, just being objective. I'd like to see what uh, more diverse distribution. Anyone uh, disagree would love to hear your thoughts. Maybe by no FOMO, he means no FUD, but um, you know, that, that is a, a bare case for the project. Like if you have huge allocation um, of your project to a small quantity, um, that could be bad. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't mean that there's a community around it potentially. Um, you know, a lot of these projects are running into these issues where people are just buying and you need to be careful with how you're launching, make sure you're not running into issues. Um, I think both Stoner and, and Vogu, like whether or not you like the art or the project or what they're doing on the launch side, ran into and made some mistakes that people need to learn from. Um, it's not something you should just look at and be like, damn, they screwed up. If, if you're buying, look for the signs. Like are, do you, do you understand like who's running it? Do you understand if they have the right, uh, infrastructure behind them to do this? Um, ask the right questions, like look at what people are saying. Don't, you know, don't just like walk away from this and say it happened. Um, learning experience, I think for everybody involved. Um, I love Christopher. He, he posted, uh, this tweet and said, how is the Vogu drop going? Reply with a GIF and tell me, um, and honestly, uh, Captain Trippy replying with what I what I assumed is the most accurate response, uh, absolute dumpster fire, um, you know, just not not a good look for for the project. People are upset. Pitchforks out. Um, yeah, not great. Um, moving on from there, obviously Eve having some moves over the last uh, seventy two hours. Um, <laughs> Yuppie pointed this out to me. There's actually a correlation with the ETH movement and uh, the the moon patterns uh, from what people show me here. Um, so if the full moon waning and uh, half moon, um, it's just crazy. Like for the first time, looking at um, you know, looking at this, like if you see this moon, the moon's like it it predicts it. Um, so we saw like that pullback happen here and then we saw the pump right on schedule where, um, you know, it's risen every single time. 
Um, so I'm going to start trading, uh, based on the moon, not financial advice. And I'm completely joking. Um, but it's just one of those things that's interesting, uh, to look at. I'm sure there's some conspiracy theories, uh, really, really running with that. Um, another thing that happened, uh, just draw some attention to, um, Dylan Orell, my brother also putting out this really cool collab, uh, that he's calling infected, uh, apes, um, basically putting the Hearst, uh, piece that he got on top of his ape giving it a really cool like chicken pox infected look uh cool to see everybody doing this and jumping on the trend uh i know tropo did it and he's been doing it for some other people so uh just a cool community thing a couple drops that are coming up obviously some of these have gotten moved around in the last uh, couple hours uh since i grabbed this from josh ong um but the drops going forward this week uh i know the tom Sachs. Rocket Factory is one that I'll have a ton of attention. Um, and then there's obviously an NBA Top Shot. The rest of these certainly worth um, just doing your research on. Look over them. Uh, the Meta Hero Mint Pass, the other one that I noted earlier in this video coming out for the um, Pixel Vault project, uh, Punk's Comic. That is one to really, really keep an eye on to see how many people are buying. Um, what is going to be the distribution, how many are going to be remain for public mint. Um, I think, I really do think that that project is going to be not only like diamond hand held, but it's going to generate some insane secondary sales. And I think the DeFi thought process, looking at what Axie is doing, looking at what they can do with gaming around, uh, NFTs and DeFi is going to be really exciting. So I'm bullish there. I'm um, excited to see what they do. Um, notable person joining the Board Ape Yacht Club, Rhetoric, uh, who is a DJ, uh, joining up and picking up this beautiful blue ape. Uh, you know, I think I think it's worth noting that like more and more people are jumping into the family. There are more people that are jumping in, not from a like, oh, it's going to get me fi followers, but I like the apes. Uh, we like the apes. I like the community and I like, you know, the space as a whole. Um, so big shout out to Rhetoric. Uh, excited to see him, in, uh, you know, interact with the community and see what he does with his ape. Um, and I'm excited to see who like the next, you know, big, big figures you see jump into the space are. Um, a notable thing here from he uh, on Arp Loss, you know, I love them too. Like, I think everybody loves art blocks, but the market is really starting to feel frothy. Um, and if you look at their Discord, the Discord has become almost like, what are we pumping next, boys? Like, what's the next project? Um, and like, no hate to art blocks. I love them to death. But there is certainly like FOMO happening at a project level there. Um, everybody wants to, you know, buy, I think prices for some projects, hundred percent justified. I think prices for some projects are fair. And then I think other ones are still like, Hey, like it is underappreciated compared to other ones. Um, but it does seem like, you know, every other day there's a new project that just pumps in the floor, triples, quadruples. Um, and I, I think it's just worth noting, like, uh, for people to think rationally that, that tweet that would, we looked at, um, at the beginning of the video, don't just buy because, you know, if you see the price going up, understand why you're buying, understand like, Hey, this ringer that is X, you know, ETH, I believe this is going to go up and I'm not just buying because the price is going up. Like I know in five years, people are going to pay X amount for it. Or I believe like you just need to do your research, understand what the market looks like, how it's going to happen with more projects coming out, um, et cetera, et cetera. Looking at NFTs market now from a whole and the numbers view, uh, really seeing, you know, art blocks is up, obviously crypto punk, super up high volume there. We'll take a look at that at the end of the video. Um, board API club seeing some decline on the 24 and seven day. Uh, I think this is just kind of leading into what is the announcement going to be? Same thing with, uh, board ape kennel club. Obviously, over the last seven days, a lot of that accumulation happening and the floor rising. So, uh, obviously, seeing some sales volume drop there. Um, anything else notable here? Let's look. V friends floor is up to four point four. Um, Wicked Craniums was a standout when I was going through this earlier, up two hundred percent on the twenty-four hours. 
and up 283% on the seven day. Uh, you know, lots of volume there. The floor price now up to 0.33. I think it was down the low 0.2s um, previous to this. Uh, so huge, huge volume there. Um, MeBits also getting a huge spike over the last 24 hours in volume up 71.3%. Uh, floor now down to 1.45. So we continue to see this floor go down. Um, and I still do think like if you want to have a MeBit, the time is kind of, you know, between where the price is now and one, like that's a, that's a fair time. I don't know if we drop under one again. Um, but I do think like me bits are becoming a little bit more affordable. The, the accumulation period has happened already. Um, and it's going to chill a little now. Uh, weird whales doing what whales do and going deeper down 54% on the seven day and the 24 hours. Um, punks comic is currently at just above a one ETH floor, uh, volume down there pegs up. They must've had a drop up 615%, um, floor price now at 15 ETH. So I know somebody who's picked up some pegs, um, those purchases probably looking good. I think the purchase was for like seven ETH. Um, so doubling if they sell at the floor, um, Going through the rest of this, Twin Flames still at 30 ETH. And the last notable one, Fame Lady Squad up 375% over the last 24 hours. The floor there being crushed in half from the last time we looked at it from 0.15 down to 0.08. Um, not a good thing for the project from a you know floor price standpoint. However, it does seem like volume uh, has gone up a bit there. Um, that kind of concludes looking through, uh, what's happening in the market. I haven't seen, um, anything else. I will note real quick name tag, getting a lot of attention. Um, you do need to own a name tag to be able to get, um, the utility on Twitter. Uh, that's a project that's worth checking out, essentially allowing you to display your NFTs, uh, on Twitter. Um, and it's a great kind of example of the innovation that's happening, um, in this space right now. Um, so with that said, let's just jump into some of the projects I wanted to highlight uh, and look through real quick. The art blocks curated um, clearly, uh, is clearly getting more and more volume and we're clearly seeing average prices go up. Uh, current average prices are 4.7 ETH. Uh, if we look through the recent sales uh, on this um, for the trading history, seeing some glitch crystal monsters go for under one ETH. Um, anything notable over the last hour here since I looked? Um, nothing too, too crazy, but the volume is obviously there for our box. More people buying into it. I know Century has been a, a project that more people are trying to pick up. Chromie Squiggles obviously being picked up more. Seeing some uh, price pullback there. I think people that missed trying to get back in. Um, an element selling for two ETH. That's pretty crazy. Another element selling for two ETH. Um, yeah, like some really interesting sales, like even a aerial view selling for 0.69. Um, so I don't think we've seen any like huge, huge sales. I know we did see a hundred point six nine Fidenza sale, uh, roll through a ringers, 20 ETH sale, um, a ringers, 96 ETH sale. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's much to say, like besides everybody's buying art blocks, the prices are really high. Um, and are they going to sustain those prices? I'm not sure. I think there is a lot of people just buying on spec relation right now. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. The board Ape yacht club floor is sitting under, uh, seven ETH right now. If we look at recent activity though, um, we're not seeing pure floor purchasing anymore. Uh, Pricing has moved to being picked up in like the mid teens, tens. Um, we're still seeing lots of sales come in between seven to 10, um, which is kind of this buying range. Uh, but the double digit sales in like the 10 to 20 ETH range um, have increased. Uh, we did see a 26 ETH sale come through for a laser eyes. Um, and yeah, like just no, like there's nothing FUD wise happening with the apes. Um, we're just kind of waiting on that next announcement. Um, and it does seem like all these charts that we're going to look at are following the same pattern that, 
uh, I've talked about in previous videos where we see saw this huge spike in volume, accumulation period, huge spike in volume, and then we're likely going to see a bit of an accumulation period until that announcement and then see a huge spike in volume. And I expect this floor to go over 10 uh, when that happens, most likely. Um, Board Ape Kennel Club sitting just under a two-way floor at 1.87. Um, same looking chart for pricing and volume. Uh, most of the purchasing here happening at the 2E floor. And then every once in a while, we get a, you know, a big sale that rolls through. Uh, it looks like most people are just picking up uh, dogs either as, you know, a bet on what the announcement is or just to get into the ecosystem. And as I've said so many times before, if you want to be part of the Board Ape Cl Yacht Club ecosystem, but you don't have the 7 ETH, uh, potentially buying a dog is the cheaper way into kind of like the club or at least getting in on the action of whatever they're going to do with the dogs. Um, for V friends, I saw the floor is over um, four still at 4.44. As far as activity goes, they have been mostly selling cores as usual. Um, and then every once in a while seeing a spectacular, uh, I don't know, I keep saying that, spectacular go for sale. Um, saw a candid clownfish go for 22 ETH a logical lion also go for 22 ETH. Um, and then I think we also saw scrolling through here earlier, a, um, I have to see a gift goat going for only 17.6 ETH. And this blew my mind when I saw that happen. Um, uh, obviously somebody didn't understand where the market was, um, for gift goats, gift goats current was a couple days ago, sitting in the thirties for floor price. Um, and there certainly were people who would pay in the 20s uh, that I even know of. Um, so definitely do your research before listing or accepting any bids. That's something that most people forget to do. Um, Hall of Fame Goat Lodge, one of those uh, highlight projects we saw launched last week from a you know hype perspective, floor down to 0 0.04. Um, and you know all the goats certainly. There's not we're not seeing like a one ETH sale. Uh, on the recent activity within like the last 24 hours, it's just floor purchasing. Um, and if anything is valuable, it's selling for like 0.15. Um, so nothing crazy happening here. Um, we'll see. It, it might be one of those projects. If you look at this chart in a couple of days, we'll see that same, you know, it went up, it's going to come down, accumulate, and then it goes back up again. It just kind of seems to be the way of, uh, the way of these projects. Um, with wicked craniums with announcements with you know the involvement with the ongoing support from the creators it does seem like uh this project is going to stick around it'll be a longer term project i don't think we hold it at that same level as like punks and board Ape yacht club yet uh but it does seem like this is a project that's not just going to sell and go away um because uh you know that was the goal of the creators was just to sell it and get rid of it um, and, you know, cash out it does seem like uh, people like this project. I like it. Um, I've considered purchasing one just to hold um, from the floor. They do look cool. They do have uh, cool vibes. So, um, you know, with the pricing kind of coming back now, seeing the floor rise back from when it was a little lower, um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out as whatever other announcements are planned uh, come to light. For Cool Cats, Cool Cats floor pulling back to 0.6. We did see this floor higher a couple weeks ago. Um, and we did push like the one Ethereum point at one point. Um, so Cool Cats currently being kind of one of those projects where people are considering like, hey, it had this run up and the price came up uh, mid-July. And we saw, you know, huge spike in volume, huge spike in sales. Average price was over one. Um, now we're seeing average price down to 0.7. Does this come back? Do the more valuable and rarer and more expensive cats start selling again? Um, because as we look at this sales activity, all of the pricing currently down around um, the floor. And then if anything rolls through, it's just around a one Ethereum. Um, so the interesting project to keep an eye on. Um, they just had their collab of Ghost. So, you know, to see that happen shows that there is still engagement in the community. They still have a great website, great UI, um, and they'll be having more uh, releases coming out uh, in the future, I believe. Um, and I know a lot of people like the cats, like people love the cats. Uh, so, you know, 
it's it's a project that certainly is not a cash grab and it's certainly a project um you know again worth keeping an eye on if you have one holding i would not sell in, in fomo or fud right now um uh, ebits pricing all the way down to 1.45 like i noted earlier we saw a huge uh run up when accumulation started um but i think volume and pricing is going to die off a bit here we'll go back to what it looked back um you know early mid-june where you know there's only a few sales happening a day they were down around the floor not you know not much buying people who picked up um trying to get out of positions um dr burry making a sale here i'm curious just you know analyze because we see him buying me bits a ton um what he did here said pocketing 0.3 on the upside um so i think i think a lot of people as this floor starts to come down that bought the way up and were trying to buy or now you know selling out of those positions uh pocketing the 0 0.1 0 0.3 eth uh that they wanted to make um and you know kind of going forward here for the foreseeable couple day future i don't know what announcements are going to come out for me bits or larva labs or whoever is doing projects with me bits um but if nothing changes i do see this slowly kind of just chilling out bleeding off as attention is so you know dispersed in other areas right now um, Weird Whales being the project from the 12 year old uh, that basically put this project out uh, with the help of his dad and kind of experimenting getting into NFTs currently sitting uh, down around like the point one area as far as sales go um, not seeing anything big roll through we did actually 16 hours ago see a point three six sale go for an alien whale um, this is going to be a project that you know, you're either going to look like a genius for buying or an idiot for buying in, you know, 12 months. We'll see what happens. Um, but it's definitely a, it is definitely like a piece of NFT history. We look back on 2021 at the end of the year and say, what were the most notable moments? Um, I think when the 12 year old launched this project and sent, you know, sent everybody on quite the, uh, the ride, um, is a notable one. So, We'll see what happens there. Punk's Comic currently sitting just above one ETH um, for the floor price. Sales rolling through around the floor. Not seeing anything premium wise for the lower mint numbers. Um, not seeing anything, you know, for for special numbers or for anything really. It's just buying up the floors. Comic is a comic. Um, I do think though we will see a couple of the low mints uh get purchased at some point here just purely based on people who want to get the physical and have like you know say number 300 uh, and say hey i have a you know one of the first 300 comics um by mint that is you know potentially a cool thing for some people um as i mentioned in the uh market statistics uh fame lady squad currently sitting um at a 0.08 floor that's half of where it was the last time we looked through this project um so yeah i mean the floors definitely pulled back there are sales that are still around that old floor of like 0.15 that were listed um it's it's a project that had so much attention and it had hype don't get me wrong like the the attention was there um i think it's executed and the art looks great it's just something that like just doing an airdrop or like additional features, I don't think keeps it in that same limelight. Um, and as far as like future goes for sales, I want to see as like an investor or somebody who's like looking for these projects to, um, you know, have longevity is take, take the characters, make a comic out of it, make an animated series, um, do merchandising, bring in, uh, you know, young, you know, women or young females into the project and get them involved, like empower the, the community. Um, there's so much you can do with this project from a, from a branding standpoint, it's super hard to do. It's not easy stuff. Um, I think people think, oh, just slap it on a t-shirt and now you have a brand and it's going to grow. Um, but how do you take the brand fame lady squad and, you know, really build something that'll last and is quality and genuine and authentic around it? Um, that is like the million dollar question slash like keeping my project alive for the next, you know, 10 years kind of question. Um, 
So that kind of looks at most of the market data on OpenSea, quickly looking at DGen data. Um, this site, again, for people who don't use uh, or looking for areas to you know get analytics and research projects, DGen data is one of my favorite ones. It's dgendata.io. Um, they produce great charts, great uh, filtering and searching mechanisms within that data. Um, and just quickly looking this morning at CryptoPunks on here, the pricing and sales activity has been very, very steady. Um, so if we look at it from a um, you know minimum sale price to the uh, current day, um, it's just slowly, slowly creeping up. And I think <sighs> CryptoPunks being like that blue, blue chip, that OG, everybody's always going to want to own a CryptoPunk. We're seeing accumulation just steadily roll through. And yesterday, obviously seeing 20 or 54 sales was a really, really busy day. Um, but I do think this price just slowly increases until there's something around, you know, Larva Labs announces something and it goes wild. Um, okay, now looking at uh, CryptoPunks, um, the CryptoPunks floor currently at 22, like I just said. Uh, the floor has been slowly rising. Um, I do expect this floor to, you know, continue to slowly rising as people are picking off, uh, you know, the cheapest options. Um, right now, looking at the floor, there are some ones that are like aesthetically pleasing. It's not all completely trash. Um, you know, as far as getting quality, I still think the 30 to 40 range is where you need to go to get stuff that like looks really good. Um, and then if you want something that is a rare trait, you're going to have to, you know, you'll be in the 50 to 70 range, uh, quite quickly. So, you know, it's hard for people that are just jumping into the space to make that leap. Um, but I do, I do really believe that you should buy something, uh, that you like and that you, you know, God forbid it goes to zero. You can look at and say, I'm fine with, you know, owning that crypto punk. Um, but I do think there is as well a investment strategy here. If you want to have something that's liquid and you can, you know, sell quickly, you know, the floor is obviously the place to be, um, just because you buy a floor punk and the floor goes up to 30 ETH, um, you know, you can list it 29 quickly get out of it. Um, I do know that over the last 24 hours of those 54 sales, the floor has not been the primary purchase point. Um, like I said, going to the 30 to 40 range to get stuff that looks pretty good um, and, or the 40 to 60, 70 range to get stuff that's rare um, has been has been a primary target area. Um, seeing a smile come through for 32, uh, you know, top hats going for sale, vapes, you know, purple hair, VR. Um, I mean, you can just look here and see that there's, you know, millions of dollars of sales that have happened over the last couple of days. Um, you know, punks aren't dead. NFTs aren't dead. People certainly want to own punks. Like it is the project to own. I'm not sure what distribution of ownership is like. Um, right now, it's still one of those projects where if you look, it's like, you know, across across the entire distribution of um, crypto punks, it's like a 25%, I think, uh, distribution. Um so it's not like Board Ape Yacht Club where almost half of, uh, you know, the tokens are held by individual wallets. Um, but yeah, the punk's looking good. Sales up, uh, continuing to rise. I expect that to continue as well. Um, we are also keeping an eye not only on the punks, but on the entire crypto market as a whole. Um, over the last 24 hours, seeing the entire market be down 1.4%. Um, but if we look at ETH and Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum is up from that slump we had into the 1700s. It's risen all the way up, uh, into the, uh, you know, mid 20, uh, two thousands. Um, we did see over the last seven days, however, this interesting, um, bounce from like whatever it was it like 1740 all the way up to 2,400 just touched 2400 and like twenty dollars yeah so it's 2420 and then it pulled back uh down to 2166 and now we are on this rise up back to 2300 
Um, I've seen people saying that they expect this to be a bear, a, a bull trap where we see this go down back into the, um, you know, the thousand dollar range, you know, $1,000 to $2,000. I don't know though. Like it, it definitely seems like that is possible. Um, we're still trading within these certain channels that are, uh, you know, identifiable. Um, but we are certainly not in a full bear market. We are certainly not in a full bear market um, or bull market or bear market. We're currently in this kind of like situation where, um, you know, we'll have a run up, we'll hit a, a hood a channel marker and then it dumps because, you know, everybody was looking for that. Uh, what I would love to see as a investor and buyer of Ethereum and Bitcoin is, you know, slow, gradual, you know, sideways movement that slowly increases 1% a day. Um, and just, you know, that's sustainable growth. Um, not these huge price movements, huge dumps and huge pumps where, um, you know, it's not quote unquote earned, uh, you know, value add. It's kind of just like, oh, there was something that was announced and we're buying in and people are going to dump. Um, with that said, there is the August 4th announcement for Ethereum. So definitely keep your eyes on that. That's only like a week away. Um, will be interesting to see what happens there, you know, going into Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that time period, uh, it'll be really interesting, um, to see what happens there. So keep an eye on the market as we head into the weekend of what's happening. Um, I do think we potentially go up if you want my like opinion, you know, not financial advice Do your own research. I do think I see this going up, um, you know, Sunday forward, we might, we might pull back into Sunday, but I do think. Uh, with that announcement coming, we see Ethereum go up just by speculative buyers. But with that said, we've also seen people selling the news pretty hard. Um, with that said, that is the morning mint for today. Uh, I know it's a long one. I had to cut in there because I forgot something on the crypto punks. Um, but yeah, really glad to be back. I'm going to start putting these out uh, earlier in the morning on the East Coast. Um, and then uh, we'll start doing timestamps and trying to do um, some more, I guess, like value add for the community. Um, continue to ask questions. I'll try to post like maybe an evening thread on what do you want on the morning mint tomorrow. We'll do uh, questions, Q and A in like the beginning of the show. And then we'll walk through the uh, news and the NFT market as it goes on. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps me out a ton. Uh, and if you didn't know, we also have a podcast for the show that'll be out on Anchor. The link is below. Um, so yeah, thank you so much uh, for listening, for watching. I uh, hope this helped uh, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.